All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing our Walking Dead discussion topic video for this week, going through some of your guys' comments and questions. And this one we're going to start with uh, giving our thoughts on a possible relationship or whatever the heck's going on between Negan and Maggie. Huh? Yeah, so this one is certainly a strange one to hear from you guys, uh, and I ignored it sort of at first because I thought it was kind of like a one-off, and then a bunch more people started leaving the same comments, so I just thought it was <laughs> super weird. I didn't really want to make a video on it, but it just wouldn't go away, and it's been, I think, what, two or three weeks now since the episode aired when they were kind of fighting over sort of what to do. Uh, I think it was, you know, waiting to see if Gabriel and some of the others would arrive there where they were at the house, you know, before when they were just kind of, the two of them were just there. And so they were sort of like uh, tussling a little bit. And I don't know, maybe it was just the fact that you had both Negan and Maggie uh, in close quarters and they were kind of like physically uh, tussling a little bit. And uh, I don't know, I guess for some people it sort of uh, triggered some uh, vibes or thinking that, uh, you know, maybe there could be something kind of romantic going on here between the two, um, you know, in that, you know, maybe like married couples the way married couples fight or this kind of thing, girlfriend, boyfriend fights. Um, so yeah, I think that's where this kind of started from this uh, this season, if you guys remember the scene. And uh, I just thought it was it was super weird. But even in next episode coming up, I think that uh, uh, there's kind of been some descriptions that have alluded to uh, Negan possibly teaching Maggie the uh, the whisper trick to wear a whisper skin and everything like that. Because uh, Negan, if you guys remember, he was with the whispers for a time, so he lived with them. He uh, you know got close to uh, to Alpha. Uh, he tussled with Beta, all that stuff that he did as part of the Whispers when he sort of uh, joined them in order to fulfill his uh, obligation to Carol. Um, so it's just weird seeing the two of them together in scenes at all. I think earlier on this season, like in the first episode or two, um, it sort of made sense that they would kind of be sort of fighting and that they wouldn't like each other. And, you know, that that totally was like uh, made, made sense to me. Um, but the two of them just being forced to be in, in close proximity to each other, especially if it's just the two of them and they have to leave Alden behind or whatever, uh, it certainly is really, really weird to see. Uh, I personally, that never really entered my mind that there was any kind of romantic thing going on there. That would be beyond just weird for me considering... Um, you know, what happened before and Glenn and everything. So and then you have Herschel too, who's like a mini Glenn. So that's really weird stuff. Uh, but Dee Lee said it, said the longer they go with Negan and Maggie, the more quote unquote romantic it gets, uh, which is really just, uh, just what a strange, uh, strange comment. Dan Smith, Dan Smith said, uh, great video as always, Trev. Uh, no romance for uh, Negan and Maggie, but I could see him sacrificing himself to save her or to save Herschel. Uh, this part of season level will end with a cliffhanger um, with Daryl being found out by the Reapers. So that's what that's Dan Smith's uh, predictions for that. So, um, you know, I think that that makes sense to me that maybe um, one of kind of like the final deaths in the series, like one of the big deaths at the very end could be if Negan um, kind of like sacrifices himself in some kind of a way to save uh, Herschel or Maggie and kind of redeem himself. I think that would make sense if you're gonna have him, sort of his final scenes would be him redeeming himself uh, as the series is coming to a close. Cause it would sort of close off the fact that they let him live and everything and it would kind of finish off in a nice story. And then at the end fans would kind of like Negan. But if you did that, then you could not use him in any further spin-offs or anthologies or anything like that in the future and we've already seen here's negan which is a flashback for him so if they do that then maybe that'll be the end for negan we will not be seeing him in the walking dead past that but that would be a big sort of fitting ending for the for the walking dead if that's where they're going with it i certainly would prefer that over the the possibility of a negan maggie relationship that would be beyond uh, strange, beyond weird, and all kinds of wrong in every different way that I can think of. But uh, Marilyn S. said, uh, Maggie and Negan, uh, 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 Negan is no Dante. Um, so, and I think that's true. But the TV series version of Dante was terrible. They could still do um, Maggie and Alden. 
but Alden has to heal up and survive what's going on right now. They have to help him and kind of bring him back, assuming that he wasn't found out by the Reapers. It seems like he wasn't. So it seems like Alden will likely survive, and then maybe we could see that with, um, you know, Maggie and Alden later on. Uh, Tainted Meat had said, uh, Promise is Broken, which is the name of the next episode coming up for Walking Dead. And then he says, uh, refers to the Walking Dead movies. <laughs> Promise is Broken. Yeah, so I like that one. That's a good one, Tainted Meat. Um, still, hope we're going to see those movies, man, but I just have no idea because it feels to me like it's getting so late for those movies to start. Um, man, by the time that they're even going to start working on them, The Walking Dead will be... It feels like it's kind of being phased out in some ways. And I know they have plans for other stuff afterwards. Maybe that's just a temporary feel, but uh, it's so weird right now. Karam S. said, uh, kind of reminded me uh, of uh, a horror movie. Uh, the last episode, this episode 5, uh, People Under the Stairs. So we got a few of those comments that the most recent episode felt like People Under the Stairs. I've actually never seen that horror movie. Um... I'm not really somebody that goes out of my way to watch every different horror movie, um, but uh, I do understand what you're uh, what you're getting out with that uh, with the uh, Connie uh, episode. Uh, the Mark Shark says, uh, "Anyone else feel like uh, the freshly turned zombies are better than fully decayed zombies uh, that we have now in The Walking Dead? I think it's more fun when the zombies more resemble the people they used to be." So I agree with you there, Mark Shark, and I think that there's some truth to that as well, that when someone just turns into a zombie, they're more formidable than they will be later on. So if they've been out in the sun for five years or ten years or whatever, um, they may have jagged fingers and stuff like that from, from clawing on stuff, so some bone showing there and stuff like that, and teeth showing and be more decayed. But their muscle tissue will kind of uh, dry out and will kind of burn out over time. Um, definitely, I think that freshly turned, you know, new zombies that are just been dead for a day or less or whatever are a lot more difficult to deal with. And I think we see that throughout the series if you watch closely. I'm thinking like Milton and walkers like that. Um, I think that when, when people first turn into walkers, they're almost more like regular people kind of coming at you. Not that they sprint or run at you. But uh, they've got all their muscle tissue. They've just recently turned. They're strong. They're stronger than they will be later on. So they're harder to deal with. So I think that if you look at The Walking Dead, you can kind of think of it as uh, the earlier on in the zombie apocalypse it is, the more difficult it would be to deal with zombies because they will be all new. And then as time goes on, zombies will get more and more decayed. So they should be somewhat easier and easier to, uh, to deal with over time. Uh, always more difficult. And I, and I think the episodes kind of show that as well, too. If you think of like Tobin and some of the others after he just turns and some of the other ones, too, where they go on a rampage and they get a whole bunch of people, well, you don't have a lot of time to deal with them, and they're not very slow. They're, they're pretty quick. They're quicker than ones that have been out in the sun for eight years, right? Uh, kind of just lurking around, barely moving or whatever. Or maybe on a tree with like um, vines growing onto them. Um, HFG said, uh, I'm interested to watch uh, them hurt up walkers. It's a damn good tactic, a real credit to Alpha. Yeah, it'd be cool to see them kind of herd up some walkers to use against the Reapers, which if they do that, I guess it's possible we could see the Reapers be dealt with in this first eight episodes. Uh, I just don't think it'll be the case. I think they will spill over into the next part, but uh, who knows, maybe they could have a big episode seven or eight or something and kind of surprised me. Uh, Sus, uh, Susan M said, uh, Virgil might be dead after he got stabbed with a question mark. I don't think so. I didn't watch the spoilers for episode um, uh, six, if you guys haven't seen it yet in AMC+. Plus. Sorry about that if I ruin anything for you, but uh, well, you sort of got stabbed, right? It wasn't like with a knife, it was like with a uh, wooden something. Um, I got the, I was under the impression that Virgil was going to be just fine. Um, it didn't seem to me like this was going to be his final, like he was dying at that moment or anything. It seemed like Connie had saved him, they were leaving together, and that it was going to be fine. Uh, Susan, uh, Susan also said, uh, there's a theory that, uh, Virgil drugged her, uh, Connie, and she's just tripping. Uh, and I think that's kind of funny and silly at the same time, and I never got that vibe whatsoever. Uh, I'm almost positive that's not what they're doing. <laughs> uh, AOTD said, Pope seems like uh, a kind of mixture of Negan and early 
uh, or early Negan and Teddy from Fear. So I did like Teddy from Fear, a really cool villain. If you guys haven't seen season six of Fear, you got to watch it. It, it is a it is a, a really cool, a really special one. You got the nuke and stuff like that, which is something that we've never seen before in Walking Dead. The uh, big submarine and everything. So it's it's really cool. And Teddy is an awesome kind of cult leader villain, I think as well. <laughs> uh, so Pope has some similarities because he's kind of got the religious fanaticism, right? Which is a little bit you know, can kind of be a little bit crazy sometimes, people that are kind of religious fanatics, right? Uh, whether it's, you know, whichever way you go with that. You could be a fanatic of kind of any religion or any belief system and kind of be a little bit crazy as far as that goes. Uh, I, I especially find people that aren't down to earth um, and kind of kind of ignore behaviorism or they, they ignore they ignore materialism or they, they kind of push away materialism, which there's a lot of things in materialism that you can't um, you can't get around, right? You got to include that in your in your mindset too. But especially when he's like uh, saying God's here and stuff like this, and he's got the fire the fire thing and all that cleansed by fire. It's kind of it's kind of some weird stuff, but it's it's fun. I, I think he's a great villain, and uh, that was really cool to find out that he was in the Dark Knight because I absolutely love the Dark Knight. Really good stuff. Um, you're not ready. Said a great video, Trevor. As always, I uh, hope your eye gets better. So, so there's nothing wrong with my eye. I was trying to look like a zombie in the live stream. Uh, sorry that I messed that up. It wasn't good enough. I threw it on like 10 minutes and I didn't have like any teeth, fake teeth or anything. So uh, it totally got messed up. Um, so it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that good. But no, I didn't get in a fight or anything like that uh, or lose a fight. So that, that didn't happen. Uh, Jadavius Williamson said, uh, I hope Heath is alive because it is uh, so many ways that Heath could survive the CRM. Well, I know Jadavius, but at this point in time, you got a question this many years later like uh, maybe you're a fan of Heath and so that's where you're at with that but I'm just saying like it's been so long since he left in Swear. Tara's not even in the series anymore. I mean you know honest I'll be honest with you here man it'd be okay if they brought him back but I don't care. Uh, I'll be totally honest with you. I don't care. I don't care if they do or if they don't if he's in the movies or he's not. I couldn't I really couldn't care less at this point. But World Beyond could be kind of interesting when it premieres. Uh, I think it's in a week or two, right? Uh, coming up soon anyway for season two, knowing that Jadis is going to be in it. And the last one will be from Twisted Metal 100 who said, uh, I think Alicia won't make it out of the bunker. It seems like they are putting most of the focus on Morgan and the others uh, for Fear of the Walking Dead season seven. So yeah, that is a little bit weird. Uh, you don't see her in the trailer uh, at all, I don't think. I don't think there's even a, link, a single little clip with her in it or anything. Um, I hope she survives that part out there, but um, you know, with the nuke and everything, and uh, I think I think she's safe in there. I mean, that's she's probably safer than almost anybody else uh, right now. But that is, uh, we don't know if there's food and all that other stuff. So long term could be a problem. So we'll see when she returns. I'm thinking sometime in the first half of season seven, maybe a few episodes in or something, and she just wasn't in the uh, the trailer. That's all. So that'll be it for today's video, guys. Let me know what you think about this one. Negan and Maggie, how weird is that? Can your mind even go there? Did your mind go there in safe space? You can leave that in the comments below. If it did, let me know. Um, I just, uh, and not, not to ridicule anything, I just think it's, like, my, my mind didn't go there. But <laughs> if yours did, leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, I just cannot fathom how weird that would be. And that's it for this video, guys. We'll see you again soon for another. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace later, guys. I'll see you soon.